Captains for tonight for the Bruins is number nine, Ethan Carpa, number three, Luke Paul, number one, Javier Waldron, and number 58, Liam Means. Currently there at midfield, the officials are talking with them and the coin toss will happen momentarily. So James, you primarily expect to see a steady diet of running tonight, double tight end sets. Let me take you back to your coaching days here. Yeah. Do you sell out and stop the run and dare Bonatot to beat you overhead? Is it gap control? What's what's the key to these guys? You're doing everything you can to just stop the run, right? Force them to pass. Make them one-dimensional. Whatever you can do, you're going to sell out to stop the run. So you go nine in the box, you just put man-to-man coverage? When they got 11 right there, all within two tight ends, you got 11 guys in the box. You always want to have one free hitter no matter what. You're going to have 11 guys in the box trying to do your best stop the run. So it's going to be some version of a zone coverage knowing Coach Gresham, but at the end of the day, you're going to have 11 guys right within that little confines. I would expect, you know, I would expect probably the, if they're going to line up in two tight ends, maybe some version of, of man, straight up man, all the way across the board to try to sell out to stop the run. Well, the coin toss has been done, and Botetot did win the coin toss, and they have elected to receive the ball. They will be going from our left to our right, facing the scoreboard here at Bill Brown Stadium. So we will get to see that explosive offensive front of the Botetot Cavaliers right out of the gate. We asked for a better night tonight, weather-wise. A little bit of coolness in the air tonight, crisp here in Blacksburg. Just great weather. Beautiful night uh, for football. You know, there's not too many nights that aren't beautiful for football, to be That's honest with you. Yeah, you get Especially see, high school football. Yeah, and, and right here, Dave Chris Field, Bill Brown Stadium, you get to see some great views, especially with the sun standing when you kind of look out back towards Price's Fork area. Some great views. I mean, it, it's spectacular, Brad. Nothing better than high school football. That is 100% sure. So the kickoff team is out for the Bruins. Uh, Liam Mena, number 31, is teeing the ball up. Looks like back deep for the Cavaliers is number one, Cade Lang, as well as number 10, Tristan Overbay. And that Cade Lang's been around for a long time. You've said his name throughout the years over and over. And Overbay started last year for him, too. So he's been around for a while. Very, very good returners back there. And Mena's kick, he drives it back to about the three-yard line. That's where Lang gets it. He's back across the 20, 25. He's at the 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. And he's knocked out of bounds in Bruin territory all the way down to the 33-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds there by number three, Luke Poff. Yeah, it's just that double wedge set up with two, two wedges right there, and he just kind of zipped right through the middle, pretty much untouched until he got to about the – when he was tackled by Luke. He, he uh, showed his speed right there, yeah. and as you said, he showed that explosiveness. He came through there, and no one got a shoulder pad or a hat on him until Luke Poff did at the 33-yard line. Botetot breaks out there in a very tight formation. Two, res two running backs on either side of nicely. They have a blocking back right in the middle. We're not lined up right, Brad. And we hand it off to number six of Botetot. Thierry McGinnis, and McGinnis breaks around the left side. He's past the 10, and he is in for a Botetot Cavalier touchdown. 11.41 to go here in the first quarter. Botetot strikes first, first play of the game. Yeah, I mean, we weren't lined up right. We had two defensive ends on the same side. Uh, I mean, of course, they run a counter right to the spot. So, I mean. That's the way it happens sometimes. Yeah. And uh, Botetot came out with a very tight formation, and we knew – the, what their offensive front does, but we did not help the cause there. Yeah, Brad, and, and, and you know, and on their roster, number 44 is also a, he's listed as a tight end slash. Oh. And Botetot's extra point attempt is blocked by the Bruins, so there is a positive note. The kick was attempted by Tristan Graves of Botetot, so unsuccessful point after attempt for the Cavaliers. Our score here, 11.41 to go in the first quarter. Lord Botetot 6, Blacksburg 0. We were going to step away for a 30-second break. You're listening to Bruin Football on ESPN Blacksburg. 
Integrity, of course, is a key principle of the Blacksburg Police Department. That's both integrity of the organization, but also integrity of the individual that we're bringing to work on our team. You won't find better people anywhere than here at Blacksburg Police Department. I've found in my years working with a variety of businesses in, in Blacksburg that the merchants kind of know that the police are there if they need them. They're, they make themselves available. They come around, they introduce themselves, and, and just so that have an idea who's coming and that familiarity really, really helps. As a martial artist, integrity is a huge thing for us. So if I look at Blacksburg PD and, and law enforcement in general, the, the integrity they have, again, it goes back to the community and what they serve. You know, the amount of hours they put in outside of it and just in their community discussing things outside of their law enforcement, they try to interact with other people and they don't even realize maybe they're a law enforcement officer at that time and they're doing their job without people even knowing sometimes. Welcome back here, Bill Brown Stadium. Botetourt Cavaliers strike first and they strike quick. First play of the game, six to nothing. Botetourt's kickoff team is on the field. Number 28, Tristan Graves tees it up and he drives it all the way back to about the five yard line and it will roll into the end zone for a Botetourt Cavalier touchback. The Bruins will take over at the 20, first and 10. Well. Like last week, Brad, we got to start off with trying to get one first down at a time, Brad. One first down at a time. Man, it's going to be tough. I mean, this good defense, tough, hard nose. I mean, they showed that first EC glass this past week. So, just got to get the first first down now. If you look at that defensive front, you've got Kashawn Anderson, 6'5", 3'10", DJ Tolliver, 6'5", 280. You've got 54, 6 foot 215 on the end. They call him Tiny. Yeah, Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Blacksburg breaks out. They've got single receiver to the right, single to the left. Snap back to Carpa. Carpa looks over the middle. He's got Javier Waldron, but the ball is thrown over his back shoulder, and Waldron is not able to connect with that. So that's going to be an incomplete pass for Carpa. Brings up second and 10 for the Bruins. I like the play call right there with Brad. I really do. Be aggressive. Take a shot, right? You got to, you, you know. Pretty tall, uh, you know, Javier's a pretty tall young man, and he's got a pretty good matchup against number 16 uh, right there, Eric Irons. And, you know, I like the call, though. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, Waldron's a great athlete. I mean, yep. he, he will go up and get the ball, and that's what you want. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Javier Waldron to the right. Luke Poff in the wing. Logan Pinnell goes in motion. And there is a penalty flag. It'll be real legal procedure against the Bruins. That will be a five-yard penalty. Brings up second and 15. That's you're exactly right. Logan Pinnell goes in motion to the right. Snap back to Carpa. Carpa hits Pinnell. At the 15, but he's met immediately over there by number 18, Grant Holmes of the Botetourt Cavaliers. Maybe a gain of a yard on the play. That's going to bring up third and 14. Ball is spotted at the 16-yard line of the Bruins. He really got downhill right there on that tackle. I mean, kid closed ground quickly. Yes, he did. And actually, a correction on the tackle there, that was actually number 10, Tristan Overbay, on the tackle. And it looks like the Bruins are going to call their first time out of the half here with 11.08 to go in the first quarter. We're going to step away for a 30-second break. You're listening to ESPN Blacksburg's Bruin Football on 93.1, 97.1. You're never too old to learn a new skill. If you're even thinking about it, just go for it. Come apply. Just apply. Just do it. Just reach out for more information. It's 100% worth it just coming down here and checking everything out. I think you'll learn. It's a wonderful experience. You can, you know, walk on the sidewalk, knock on the door and say, hey, I want to learn how to do this, and we train you. Join us here. You're going to make friends that become family. You don't necessarily have to be an EMT. You could do technical rescue and climb trees and do scuba diving and things like that. It doesn't have to be, you know, riding in the ambulance as the main EMT provider. Just come join us, have some fun. You won't regret it. It's always good to do that first step and that first step can be the hardest and the scariest step, but you can't do anything unless you do that first step. So I would say just reach out if you're interested and that we would love to have you a part of our family.
Welcome back here, Bill Brown Stadium. The Bruins are trailing the Lord Botetourt Cavaliers early here in the first quarter, six to zero. Blacksburg third and 14 deep in their territory. Handoff goes to David Oliver and he is swarmed up by a host of Cavaliers over there led by number 78, Keyshawn Anderson. That will bring up fourth down for the Bruins deep in their territory. Yeah, we just gotta hopefully have another big kick out of Liam right here, try to flip this field a little bit. Kicking into the wind just a little bit too makes it kind of tough. Liam, I actually like the play call, guys. Maybe if you catch your bottom top sleeping, thinking Blacksburg's going to go long on third and 14, you can break one. Kate Lang's back deep for the Botetourt Cavaliers. Liam Minna set to punt it away for the Bruins. Snap is on the ground, but Minna picks it up, and he drives the ball, kicks it back to about the 47-yard line of the Cavaliers. Lang breaks a tackle. He's at the 40 of the Bruins, and he's brought down over on the Botetot sideline. And it will be Botetot's ball at about the 40-yard line where they'll have first and 10 here in the first quarter. Just got to get lined up right here on defense and see if we can make a stop. It's four down territory again. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you know, they've been in Blacksburg territory both times they've had the ball. Yep. Scored on the first play, and they're coming up with their second one. Pretty good punt, guys, 39 yards. Yeah, you know, and, and, and he had to pick the ball up off the turf as well. Botetop breaks the huddle, running backs to both sides of Nicely. Nicely is in a pistol position. Handoff goes to number 10, Tristan Overbay. Overbay over the right-hand side, and he's met there by number three, Luke Poff. Pickup of about five on the play. Maybe actually a little bit. Yeah, about five on the play. I saw the yard marker yeah. going way up. And, uh, <laughs> yep. uh, but, yeah, about five on the play. So that's going to bring up second and five. Ball spotted at the 36 of the Bruins. And this Botetourt offense, you look at those linemen, they are shoe to shoe. Yep, they are know. tight as you can get. That is for sure. Handoff goes, the fake handoff to McGinnis, and it is number seven, Jakari Nicely with the keep. He goes to the left, he breaks over the right, and he takes it into the end zone for Botetourt Cavaliers. There is penalty flags on the play. As of now, he's into the end zone, touchdown. But there is a flag. Looks like maybe a hold over there where it was thrown at. I believe that it could be a hold. That was away from the ball. Oh, away from the ball, personal foul. So the touchdown is. The result of the play is a touchdown. It is successful, but there's a personal foul against Botetot. So touchdown is good. Personal foul must have happened after the play, and that does go against the Botetot Cavaliers. So our new score here, 9.33 to go in the first quarter. Lord Botetot 12, Blacksburg 0. It looks like we're going to take the penalty on the kickoff. Botetot breaks the huddle. Doesn't look like they're going to attempt an extra point attempt. They are actually going for two here, two point conversion. McGinnis to the right, Overbay to the left of Nicely. Snap is back, Nicely keeps it. He's going up the middle and he walks into the end zone for a successful two point conversion for the Cavaliers. Our new score here, 9.33 to go in the first quarter. Lord Botetot 14, Blacksburg zero. You're listening to ESPN Blacksburg 93.1, 97.1.
Welcome back here, Bill Brown Stadium. Bought a top with the 14-0 lead. They kick the ball off from the 25. Ball rolls to the 10 of the Bruins. Logan Pinnell picks it up there. He's going to the right-hand side, and he is met quickly by a host of Cavaliers there. He maybe gained a couple yards on the reception or on the return. He brings it up to the 12-yard line, and that's where the Bruins will take over deep in their territory once again. You kind of hope we picked that ball just a little bit early because we might have a little better field position, Brad. I mean, you got him backed up, kicking off at the 25-yard line. You really kind of lost the opportunity right there. That's something that the special teams coach would show to these players in the tape review on Monday. When you have a kickoff that deep, you don't run sideways to the football. You approach the football, pick it up, get as many yards as, as, many yards as you can. Straight ahead, absolutely. Carper with the snap, handoff goes to Oliver. Oliver is swarmed up. First in for the Cavaliers, number 78, Sean Anderson. It'll be a loss on the carry for Oliver. Loss of about four, so that's gonna bring up second down and 14. And that slanting defensive line of Botata just kind of got on the hip of our guard and just kind of tracked it down pretty easily right there, Brad. Sometimes when that center has a nose, tackle right on him. He doesn't block back. And um, that's what kind of happened right there. We didn't block back one. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Two receivers to the left. Wing to the right. Snap back to Carper. Carper rolls to his left. He's going down the field. And he tries to toss it over to Luke Poff. And the pass is behind Poff. And it will fall incomplete, bringing up third down and 13 for the Bruins. Yeah, very well could have been. One of those one of those things where it was going to Luke. That was what it was designed to do, go to Luke. And they had two blockers out there in front as the receivers. It was kind of a plan blocking down the field. We just didn't quite execute it as well. Uh, man, that, that was kind of like the play versus Giles last week that got called back. Yes. Carper with the snap, and he go, throws Luke. it out to Poff. Poff takes the ball all the way down to about the 19-yard line. Not going to be quite enough for a first down. So it's going to bring up fourth down, but good pass completion there to Poff, and Poff almost got to the first down marker, but just is a little bit shy of it. So that will bring up fourth and about three for the Bruins. Ball, again, is spotted at about the... 19 yard line. Menas back in with the punt team. Back. I really I really like how we're trying to get the ball to Luke. Yes, trying that's to get right. The ball to him in a little space right there. Back deep for the Cavaliers, number 10, Tristan Overbay. Snap is back to Mena. Mena gets a good punt off. He drives it all the way back to about the 43 yard line. Tristan Overbay breaks two tackles. He's across midfield and he's met there once again by number three, Luke Poff. And he's able to get up to the 46 yard line of the Bruins, but Poff does a good job of covering his position there from the long snap position. Yeah. There, there is a Bruin down on the field for an injury. You know, Brad, it's 14 nothing right now with 7.46 to go in the first quarter, right? They're starting in our territory for the third time in this ball game. Third time, you're exactly right. And you know, all so familiar of last year yeah. at Botetot. And uh, um, you know, we were hoping that we could sort of somehow slow down that start right. for Botetot, just so we could try to build a little bit of confidence in those types of things. But gosh, it just didn't go our way right now. I think if Blacksburg had 11 Luke Poffs out there, this will be a much closer game. That young man's a football player. He is a great football player. I really enjoy watching Luke play. We talked about it last week. Uh, you know, Luke was a good football player last year, but you could tell, obviously, how much he's worked in the offseason on his speed, his strength, everything. Much more explosive this year than he was last year. And, uh, you know, kids like Luke Poff uh, that come to work every day, that's, that's the ones you, you know, you really want to see some, something positive coming from this team because they they lay it on the line every day yeah it's not easy to keep getting up but he is he is that's yeah, right that's and the main thing you know uh might not understand it now but later in life he will this will be better for him to to find ways through adversity and and uh, that's what he'll do by the top breaks the huddle 
Snap is back to nicely. Handoff goes to McGinnis. McGinnis over the right side. And it looked like he fumbled, but he is down. And good job there by the Bruins. Looked like number two, James Rich, in on the tackle for the Bruins. And just a gain of a yard. So good defensive uh, uh, series there. And, and, and Thomas Boyd right there, pretty strong young man. He's getting out there making a couple plays. It's good to see that. I just think we need to get a little closer to the football, Brad. We need to bring those safety downs a little bit more and, and sell out a little bit harder. Hand off to the left side, McGinnis. He breaks a tackle. He's across the 40, takes it down almost, looks like about to the 34-yard line. I believe he has enough yardage there for a Bata Top Cavalier first down. Actually, they're going to spot the ball at about the 33-yard line. That will be enough for a Cavalier first down. Yeah. That's just not sealing the edge for a Cavalier. You seal the edge on that left side, and you make the first tackle when you had a good shot. That's a short game. Oh, absolutely. Botetop breaks the huddle once again. Fakes the handoff, nicely goes up the middle, then he breaks to the left side, and he's tackled over there after about an eight-yard pickup. Javier Waldron in on the tackle, as well as... Looked like, looked like number 88, Cooper St. Martin. Bottom shots right back on the on the ball. Like they're not even going yep. to huddle. They're right back on the ball. Double tight situation. Blocking back slides to the right. And handoff goes up the middle. And that looks like number two, Zion Woody. Woody takes it down deep into Bruin territory, all the way down to the 12-yard line, and that's another Cavalier first down. We see uh, the quarterback getting his arm pumping. He's pumping his arm. He wants to increase that tempo, keep going fast and fast. Snap is back. Hand off to McGinnis over the left side. He's He breaks a tackle, and he is going to walk into the end zone for another Cavalier touchdown. Number six, Tierra McGinnis with his second touchdown of the night. 6.15 to go here in the first quarter. Our new score, Botetot 20, Blacksburg 0. You know, we're having a hard time tackling these guys. It's already proved. We have, they've already proved that tonight. So we got a team tackle. We've got to get more hats to the football, and uh, just not doing it. And they're going for two again right here, Brad. Two-point conversion by the Cavaliers. Snap back to Nicely. Nicely with the quarterback keep. He breaks tackles, and he's dragging Bruins into the end zone, and that will be a two-point conversion success for number seven, Jakari Nicely, our new score here, 6.15 to go in the first quarter. Lord Botetot 22, Blacksburg 0. We are going to take a 30-second break. You're listening to Bruin Football on ESPN Blacksburg. Service is so important, and we don't mean just riding herd on people and looking for violations. Service in helping people, in being available, in being in dialogue, in participating in activities. Our police are true members of our community. There was one day when I had a problem on the back of the building. Somebody was monkeying around, if you excuse the expression. They shouldn't be back there, and it was after hours. And I happened to just call the dispatcher, and an officer was here within minutes. The bottom line is, is that you don't want to mess around in Blacksburg. They're very responsive, they're very professional, and very quick. They are hardworking, valuable individuals who are truly ethical and great people. Just overall great people who I think you know, Blacksburg is really lucky to have and to represent our community. Welcome back here, Bill Brown Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia, where the Cavaliers with the early lead over the Bruins, 22 to zero with 6.15 to go in the first quarter. Touchdown there by number six, Tierra McGinnis. Teeing it up for the Cavaliers, number 28, Tristan Graves. He drives it back to the 15, and it's caught by Javier Waldron. Waldron takes it back up to the 24, maybe 25-yard line, and that's where the Bruins will take over first and 10. That's the best field position they've had all night. Yeah, we have to have something positive happen in this drive, Brad. we got to get at least a couple first downs. I mean. 
if we even have to punt the ball back, we at least got to get to their side of the field. That's time. right. So, uh, needs something to go well right here for us. Yeah, maybe a quick slant right now would be a good play call. Get a little bit of action in that linebacker area and soften them up just a little bit. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. They've got two receivers to the right. Aiden Eldridge is the blocking back to the left. Snap back to Carp, a handoff to Oliver. Oliver's going to the right side, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds there by Tristan Overbay, as well as number 16, Eric Irons. There is laundry on the field, however. Look like a possible face mask right there, Brad. Might be what it is. We'll wait for the official's call here. It is going to be a face mask penalty against the Cavaliers. Looks like it's probably going to be a five-yard face mask penalty, so inadvertent face mask. The face mask. But that will give us a five-yard advantage. Ball will be spotted up at the 30-yard line, and we'll repeat first down, first and five. Well, that's our first positive thing right here. Hey, we'll so take, we'll take it. it. Yeah. We will take it. All right, Mark, we brought you in here for the for the good mojo, all right? Start getting well, I'm not doing a very good job of it so far. Sure. <laughs> I'm blaming it on you, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Carpus pass intended for Logan Pinnell falls incomplete. That's going to bring up second and five for the Bruins. <clears throat> that was Maybe Seth Williamson may have got a minimal level of that ball in back in a weird rotation of it, it did. I couldn't tell if he got a hand on it or it just slipped out of Carpa's hand, but uh, it definitely uh, didn't look correct when it came out for sure. Yes, it was. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Aiden Eldridge as well as Javier Waldron to the left-hand side receivers. Logan Pinnell with the catch, and he's met there by number eight. Ben Gilbert. <laughs> yeah, pick one, Brad. We got, <laughs> we got a few of them there. 16, 7. I mean, they brought it. It was a host of uh, Cavaliers, and there is no gain on the play. There is a Bruin down for an injury timeout. That will bring up third and five here. We're going to keep it here. 5.49 to go in the first quarter. Bruins are traveling from your right to your left, and they are trailing the Cavaliers big here in the first quarter, 22 to zero. And Brad, it's just hard to get anything going. They give Botata a lot of credit. You know, they're pushing us around. They're swarming on defense. I mean, they are getting after it. They're they're a good football team. They're a good football team. Well, you had to know they were going to come in tonight with with a mission. You know, they lost last week to EC Glass. Botata's not used to losing very often, and so. You know that they had a good week of practice coming into this game. I fall two of their state championship games. Each game, the fundamentals are there. They tackle efficiently. They don't arm tackle. They bring the body, and they tackle you. They don't miss on defense. That is correct. Third and five here for the Bruins. They break the huddle. Nathaniel Means to the left side of the receiver. Now he will... Go back to the left side. Number 10, Aiden Eldridge will be the blocking back. Now Means will go to the right side, and now Blacksburg will call a timeout. Obvious confusion there with Blacksburg. That's really, you know, it's disturbing when yeah. you have an injury timeout, so you have a lot of time over there with your players, and then that happens. Uh, um, those are the types of things that we've got to shore up. We can't have those types of, of mistakes. We've already called two timeouts, and we still have five minutes and 27 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Because yeah, once you start playing in um, hopefully a game where it's a full four-quarter game, you're going to have to have these timeouts in the fourth quarter because you might need that two-minute drive. Uh, you might need it just for that big moment but when you do actually have a screw-up, but it's a tight ball game. You know, I hope we can get that straight, Brad. We've got to get that straight. we got to. we got to give ourselves every opportunity we can to win. Yeah. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Single receiver to the right, single to the left. Oliver in the backfield beside of Carpa. Carpa throws to Javier Waldron at the 30. He makes a move. He's at the 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds back 
in Bruin territory at the 43-yard line, but that will be a first down for the Bruins. That'll be our first first down of the night. Well, you know, that's that matchup we talked about from the first play of the ball game. You know, Javier, the heck of a ball player, got a good matchup, made, you know, made one move, made the guy miss, and now he's got a little space. I mean, those matchups we got to keep exploiting the best we can. We, we have to. I mean, and, you know, we talked about it in pregame. You got to get it in the hands of your players that's going to make the most noise for you. Snaps back to Carpa. He looks over. He's got Waldron again. Waldron catches it at about the 46, and he's driven backwards by a host of Cavaliers. But it'll be a pickup of about three on the reception up to the 46 yard line. Bruins will have second down there. 5 01 and counting here in the first quarter. Bruins trailing the Botetock Cavaliers 22 to 0. Two plays in a row. I mean, you know, we've been going backwards by uh, trying to run the football. So, hey, keep giving it to Javier. Maybe when Luke gets back in there, give him some touches. Uh, you know, I, I like it. I like it trying to air it out a little bit right now, Brad. Try to loosen this Botetot group up a little bit. Blacksburg's got three receivers to the right. A little bit of confusion, but they get it set up. Handoff goes to Oliver up the middle, and he is absolutely swarmed. So that will be a loss of a yard on the play. The entire. Very well could be. Um, you know, I, there's not a lot of moving right there because I, I tell you, number 63, Ryan Quesenberry, 6'2", 270. Then you've got Kashawn Anderson, 6'5", 310. Um, from a running perspective, I don't think we match up very well to be able to drive those young men off the ball. Yeah, physically it's it, it's very difficult for us to do that. Blacksburg breaks the huddle, snaps back to Carper. Carper looks down the field. He's got Waldron, and Waldron comes down with the catch, and it looks like it will be enough for a Bruin first down. The Bruins are in Botetot territory all the way down to the 46-yard line. You know, that's your player right there, Brad. Um, first time I've seen us go empty all year right there. Nobody in the back row but the quarterback. And, you know, the ball has been on this hash, our near hash the whole quarter pretty much. And it's not really a far throw. So Ethan, Ethan's having a nice time, a lot that's of success right. throwing those shorter passes right there. Blacksburg breaks the huddle, two receivers to the left. Javier Waldron, as well as Means. Handoff, and there's a fumble on the play. Handoff, tried to hand off to Oliver. Fumble on the play, and Botetot recovers the fumble. Looks like number 75, DJ Tolliver, on the recovery, and Botetot will take over once again in the Bruin field of 45-yard line. First and 10. You hate to see it, guys, but right now the Botetot defensive line is just pushing line back. They were in the backfield almost at the same time as the handoff. Well, if you look at it, I mean, from a from a weight and size standpoint, I mean, they probably have 80, 80 pounds on each of our players up front. About the top breaks the huddle. Receiver to the right. Handoff goes to number one, Cade Lang, up the left-hand side. He takes it down to the 35-yard line of the Bruins. It looks like it will be enough for a first down, and it is a first down for the Cavaliers. Now, Brad, we talked about this a lot last year. This is not the matchup we wanted. We didn't want this ball game, and it's not a good game for us to have on this schedule. Um, you know, as this program tries to build, it's just not one of those games that's a good matchup at all for us. It, it doesn't help us. They're a 3A school. They're very strong and physical, and so then you come out also just hoping you keep your players injury free. Handoff goes to number two, Zion Woody. Woody over the right side. He takes it down to about the 29-yard line. That'll bring up second down for the Cavaliers. James Richard on that tackle. Good to see him back and uh, hopefully get back up to game speed after missing last week. Yeah, we're going to need him as we go through the season here. Um, he's going to be a key component for that defense. Back on the ball quickly is the Cavaliers. Nicely in the shotgun formation. Snap is back. Handoff goes to, fakes the handoff to Zion Woody. Jakari nicely over the right-hand side to the 10, the 5, and he is taking it into the end zone for another Cavalier touchdown. 
Didn't take long again, Brad. No, you know, I tell you, it nicely does a really good job of reading that and sort of that, that, that mesh between him and Woody there. You couldn't really tell who had the ball no. until the very last second, and uh, nicely did a real good job there. He does. He, you know, he's an experienced quarterback. He's run these same plays now for, for four years. Uh, you know, he's just reading that C-gap defender, what it ends up being that guy between the tackle and tight end, and, you know, based on what he does, he's either keeping it or he's either giving it and uh, you know a lot of times right now we just don't have anybody there to defend it right now Brad. exactly right point after attempt is successful by number 28 tristan graves that will make our score 29 to 0 227 to go here in the first quarter we're going to keep it here well i'll say this brad on that last series blacksburg found a little bit of something that was working the left side in the boundary It, it really does. You know, uh, did see some positivity there, and then it just sort of went away with the uh, um, mixed up handoff. Blacksburg's kick return team is back out there. David Oliver is deep for the Bruins. I would like to say, Brad, though, this is a pretty good little student section right there. I mean, they're out and about cheering this team on. Um, well, that's a pretty good amount of kids out there. It's good to see that. It really is, and that's what you want. Number 20, Dean Webb, set to kick it away for the Cavaliers. And he drives the ball all the way back to the 10-yard line where Oliver will receive it. He's across the 15 to 20, and he runs out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. And that's where the Bruins will take over, first and 10. Yeah, it's great to look out there, James. You know, that's the one thing that I think has been a really common thing for the Bruins, even through some of these struggles. These kids are still coming out, and they're supporting their 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 players and, and their classmates, and and that's pretty special. That is great, and that's that's what high school's about, you know. Hopefully, these fans, these kids, are going to have a good time tonight too, and make some memories. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's just nice to see them there. I mean, they've been coming out, you know, even to the volleyball games. They, you know, they've done great this year. That's Very super. proud of them. Blacksburg snap goes to Carpa. Carper throws to number 12, Nathaniel Means. Means takes it up to about the 26-yard line where he's knocked out of bounds there by number 10, Tristan Overbay, as well as number 14, Seth Williamson. You know, Brad, that's just an extension of the run game, just a way to get wide. I mean, just quick kidding passes. You know, there's only two two-yard game, but just something quick, something to get away from that, you know, 1,500-pound front line of this that's right. top team. I mean. I like the play call. I like him trying to get out there. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Single receiver to the right, singer to the left. Poff in the slot. Poff breaks down the middle. He's open, and it is caught by Poff down to the 43-yard line. That'll be a first down for the Bruins. You know, and, and, and that was a great job right there. Good pass. And Luke was held, too. There should have been a flag thrown. And seven yards down the field, he was being held. I mean, just great effort right there. Terrific effort, good ball by Carpa, great throw, and uh, and Poff just went and got it. Ball spotted at the 44. Good stretch by number three. He had to lay out to get that one, and he did just that. You could sort of see that one opening up once he released. You know, you mm -hmm. could tell what was coming. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Oliver to the left of Carpa. Snap is back to Carpa. Carpa rolls to his left, and he's going to go down the field. He's got Javier Waldron. In by the top cat territory, all the way down to the 39. That's going to be enough for another Bruin first down. Same matchup, same opportunity. Yeah, it's it. That's the wide side of the field. Blacksburg's traveling from the right to the left. And they're on the hash mark that's closest to the Bruins sideline. You know, as a coach, though, you know, I look down there, Coach Leonard's liking this matchup right here. But he also can see the game a lot better because it's happening right in front of him because he's standing right there on that sideline. Makes it helpful. Harper looks, and he's got Poff in the reception by Poff down to the 36-yard line of the Cavaliers. 
That'll bring up second down for the Bruins. Another good pass and good reception there. Good connection between Carpa and Paul. That was the same play we scored on versus uh, Giles last week. A little mesh. Yep. And Luke going straight down the seam right there. Eight yard reception for Paul. Seeing some positivity here as we drive down the field as this first quarter winds to an end. Snap is back to Carper. Carper rolls to his right. Tolliver is there. Carper throws down the field and Luke Paul makes an unbelievable catch, one handed catch at the 15 yard line where he is tackled. He had defenders draped all over him and he still somehow comes up with that reception and that will be another Bruin first down. Yeah, Jakari was all over him. He just reached up with that big Paul. Great way to end the first quarter, Brad, right there. I mean, heck of a play, good pass, under duress a little bit. I mean, Hey, I love it. Love what I'm seeing right now, Brad. That's exactly what we want. Well, that's going to be the end of the first quarter of play. Bada tot 29, Blacksburg 0, but Blacksburg is on the move. We will return for the second quarter of play. You're listening to ESPN Blacksburg Bruin Football. Welcome back here, Bill Brown Stadium. Penalty flag on the play to start the second quarter against the Bruins. It'll be illegal procedure. Ball will be spotted back at about the 20, 20 yard line. So it will be first and 15 from the 20. That's one of those self inflicted wounds we talked about in the pregame, guys, that Blacksburg has to eliminate. This team needs no help on the other side of the line right now. You're exactly right. No help at all. That's a good football team, Brett. I mean, Mark, sorry about that, but they need no help, and, and hopefully we'll come out and make a play right here. Going empty formation, Brad. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Three receivers to the left, single receiver to the right. Carpa back by himself. He rolls to his right. He's looking, he's running, and he throws down the field. And he's got Addison Bass all the way down to the one-yard line where Bass is 
pushed out of bounds by Jakari nicely, but that will be a Bruin first down. Great pass and catch between Bass and Harpa. Actually, ball will be spotted at the two-yard line. Terrific job there by the Bruins. Here comes James Rich in now for the Bruins. Uh, first time I've seen him in on offense. Uh, see what we're going to do right here. Get a little bit of an extra blocker in yeah, there. Yeah, a little bigger body in there. I like what I'm seeing right now from Carpenter. He's getting in a little bit of a rhythm here. Blacksburg breaks the huddle, single receiver to the right, single to the left. Carpenter's going to go to the left-hand side, and he is going to be swarmed up, and that should be a pistol yep. feet flag there. Late hit by number 78, Kishan Anderson. So that will be a personal foul, so it'll be half the distance to the goal, so it'll be moved up to the yard and a half line. He just kind of did a Superman I mean, jump. He just did. I mean, it was like off the top top rope, yeah. James. <laughs> I mean, WWE stuff. But Brad, I'll be honest with you. I was thinking, you know what? Sometimes I think we're better off at the seven yard line. Give us a little bit a little more space, space so yeah. we can throw the football. Now we're back down there at the two yard line, and it's kind of tightens it up a little bit. Rich for 310 pounds. That young man got airborne. Yes, yes he, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Two receivers to the left. Poff to the right-hand side as a wing. Snap is back. Poff is over to the right side. It's going to be picked off by number one, Cade Lang. And Lang is going to be brought down at the 22-yard line. I don't know exactly what happened there. I, I don't know if it was an early snap and nobody else moved, or I could have sworn it was some type of legal procedure That's right there. That's what I thought, too. I thought Blacksburg left way early. Yeah, and that would actually help us in that situation. It would have, but unfortunately, that's not the call on the field. The call on the field is an interception by Cade Lang, number one of the Botetourt Cavaliers at the one-yard line, and he returns it back to the 26, actually correction, 23-yard line, and Botetourt will take over first and 10 from the 23. Mm, we had something going there, guys. Snap back to Nicely. He hands off to number two, Zion Woody. Woody breaks over the right-hand side and takes it up to about the 31-yard line. And that'll bring up second down for the Cavaliers. They just got numbers at the point of attack, Brad. I mean, that's what it comes down to. There's... Well, and that's, you know, we saw that last week. That's, yeah. that's what happened last week as well. And, uh, you know, when you run against power formation teams like this, it's hard to put a three-man front up there. Snap is back to Nicely. Nicely fakes it. He breaks off the left-hand side. He's at the 35, and he's going to be brought down there by Luke Poff, but not before Nicely is able to pick up enough yardage for Cavalier first down. Good open field tackle there by Poff, though. Yep, against a pretty good little athlete right there. So. Yes. Just too much space right now, Brad. There's just too much space. Yeah, you look at it. The handoff goes to number five. Shahik Emmons Mayo, Mayo correction, that's number six, Terry McGinnis. McGinnis is going to take it down to about the 47 yard line. That'll be a first down by the Cavaliers. You know, they just keep bringing more and more running backs out there, Brad. I mean, they got a stable full. They do, they do. And they're all good. Yeah, all well, very good. Back. Yeah. I, I would imagine if you're going to play for Jamie Harless, you're going to learn to block. Nicely fakes the handoff. He keeps it up the middle. He breaks over the right-hand side, takes it down to the 39-yard line. That will be enough for a Botetourt Cavalier first down. 10.36 to go here in the second quarter. Cavaliers leading the Bruins 29-0. QB power replay has been successful for them all night long. They, and, could, uh, they could run it every play if every, they wanted yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. Handoff goes to Woody. Woody over the right side, 35-30. He is tackled there by Luke Poff as well as Javier Waldron. But that's enough yardage for a first down for the Cavaliers once again. Ball will be spotted at the 27-yard line of the Bruins. You know, they get those super tight splits, Brad, because, you know, on their offense, they're running a lot of power and counter. So they want tight splits because they're always double teaming at the point of attack. So, I mean. Timeout on the field. That will be Blacksburg's third charge timeout of the half. So they have no more timeouts 
remaining in the half. We're going to keep it here. You know, Vata just they, they just wear you down. Yeah. I mean, they, they're, they're wanting that tempo. They're wanting to move quick. And there's nothing fancy about what they do. It's just a tight formation, and they're just going to come right at you. Yeah, football in a phone booth, Brad. That's, I mean, that's it. what it comes down to. That is. Usually you see offensive line with splits like 18 inches, something like that. Yeah. This is shoe against shoe. Yeah. They just yep. allow no space whatsoever. You can't even really do gap control because there's no gap to control. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Double teams, double teams, double teams. And, you know, when you take 600 pounds oh, yeah. and you start double teaming a 200-pounder, well, you're basically lifting them up and taking them back to the linebacker. I'm sitting here looking. 310, 280. Yeah. We've got the smallest one we got is 215, but we've got another 280. And the only reason Tolliver's not in there on offense tonight because he has a broken, broken hand. Broken hand, so that's really right. Can't hmm. block as well. Ooh. So, I mean, he's. 300 pound young man yes, or 280 is. and moves pretty good snap back to nicely nicely keeps it he goes up the middle he's still moving and he takes it into another touchdown he for the cavaliers he broke probably three tackles there that's a strong young man yeah. and we did a very poor job of trying to bring him down yeah another qb power replay brad and um you know their efficiency on that one play uh, I'd hate to guess. It probably has 25 yards per play if I could just go off what I've seen and recall. I would I would imagine that you are correct. On for the point after attempts, number 20, Dean Webb of the Cavaliers. Snap is down. Webb's kick is no good. Our score here, 10.02 to go in the second quarter. Lord Botetourt Cavaliers 35, Blacksburg 0. We're going to step away momentarily. You're listening to ESPN Blacksburg Bruin Football on 93.1, 97.1. My name is Rob Speeden, and I'm a search mission coordinator and a tracking specialist on the search and rescue team. Hey, I'm Bob Barnes. I'm the light technical rescue coordinator. I'm Drew Manzella. I'm the extrication discipline lead. I'm Josh Poisonberry. We're part of the technical rescue group. And one of the cool parts about technical rescue is that we are able to do what we do on a daily basis and bring those expertise to the table. Some of us it may be uh, mechanically inclined, some of us it may be more technology oriented, and we're able to bring that to the table. So Blacksburg Rescue Squad, Blacksburg Volunteer Rescue Squad is a unique organization. We have a lot of equipment that you don't see around many rescue squads. If you go out there and look in that bay, you're going to see that about half the vehicles, half the equipment, are to get the patient to the hospital. The other half of the vehicles in that bay are to get the patient to the ambulance. That's what we do. I've said it before, and you know, I'll keep saying it. There's a, a thinking outside of the box, problem-solving type component that really goes along heavily with technical rescue. No two rescues are ever going to be the exact same situation. There's going to be an element of sizing up the situation and figuring out how to best approach it that's going to be safe but also effective. There's a lot of opportunity for people within the, the different ranks that we have here to do different things that are all problem solving oriented. I would say that just having a team like this, a multidisciplinary team that works on a variety of challenges together is a phenomenal family oriented group and a, a great challenge and learning opportunity for anybody in the community. Welcome back here, Blacksburg, Virginia, Bill Brown Stadium, Dave Chris Field. It is all Cavaliers tonight, 10.02 to go in the second quarter, and they are leading the Bruins 35-0. to zero. They are teeing it up once again for the kickoff. Dean Webb set to approach the ball, and he drives it all the way back to the 10-yard line, and it's going to roll into the end zone for a touchback, and the Bruins will take over from the 20, first and 10. They did, and you know that that's sort of been the heartbreaking thing uh, that that we've seen is we'll get some positivity going, and then boom, something hits us, you know, and. And, and confidence is a huge thing uh, in anything that you do in life. And so, um, you know, you got to applaud the kids for just keeping coming out here and, and fighting for it. 
Snap back to Carpa. Carpa throws over. It's going to be picked off by Cade Lang. Lane's at the 15 to 10 to 5, and he walks in the end zone for a Botetot Cavalier touchdown. He did. He broke on it just right, and the ball was just a little bit high as well. And uh, but you you know you could see it coming, and and he could as well, and uh, um, ends up picking it off and taking it back for the touchdown. That's his second interception of the evening. Me, uh, number twenty, Webb on for the extra point attempt. Snap is back. Hold is down, and Webb's kick is good. Our new score here, 9.55 to go in the second quarter. Lord Botetot 42, Blacksburg 0. We're going to keep it here. Well, again, Blacksburg tried to get that, that kind of sideline route that they've been running pretty effectively, or at least they did on the, the previous series, but that one was telegraphed. You yeah. saw it, I saw it, everybody in the stands saw it. As a quarterback, your eyes and your body can't that's get right. off the defense, and that's something young Mr. Parker is going to have to learn. Well, and you know, you, you look at it, and, and you know, they jumped the route down here uh, at, at at the goal line when we were ready to score, and um, you know, sometimes you come back to that play, and it was the exact same play, but maybe you come back to it with a with a little pump and go, you know, if it, it, say a little pump thing, yep. maybe. As long as the quarterback has time to do the pump thing. That's right. And That's right. So far, Blacksburg hasn't had that because they just, I mean, this is basic physics. That is correct. David Oliver's back deep for the Bruins. Webb set to kick it away, and he drives the ball down to about the 15 yard line, and it rolls out of bounds. So that will be a penalty against the Cavaliers, and that should set the ball to the 35 for the Bruins. That'll be good field position for Blacksburg. Hopefully they can get something going here. Starting to make the transition now at the stadium from daylight to lights. Beautiful stadium. It really is. You know, I keep thinking back about those teams when we, we called the games about how fast they were on a really poor grass surface that we had at that time. I couldn't imagine watching them now. Easily. Waldron's to the left. Carpa's looking down for Waldron, and Carpa's going to be picked off once again by number 16 of the Cavaliers, Eric Irons. Irons is back to the Blue Ones 40, the 35. And he's brought out of bounds there by number 52, Thomas Boyd. Bruins looking to throw a deep pass, intercepted all the way by number 16. Well, like the play calls. The problem was he just simply put too much air. Big return finally brought down by the Bruins here. Think about Bobby Todd. Yeah, they're really big up front, but they've got speed on the edges as well. Oh, yeah, they are they're, they have some good athletes there. 9.43 to go here. Botetot Cavaliers traveling from your right to your left. Second interception in a row. And there was a penalty flag after the play. Yeah. Was it a face mask? Okay. Inadvertent face mask. So. Hmm. So ball will be spotted at the 24-yard line where the Cavaliers will have first and 10. You know, McGinnis, Overbay, and then you obviously you have the quarterback nicely all in the backfield. I mean, that's three really good athletes back there. Yeah, and I mean, then you throw in Zion Woody. That's yeah. another great athlete. Handoff goes to Overbay. He's over the right-hand side, and he's met there by a host of Bruins. Pickup of about three yards on the carry for Overbay. One thing I've noticed with the H-back does that little jump shift. They're going to that side almost all the time. Hopefully the coaches are seeing that at halftime. They'll say, when that H-back makes the shift, we need to shift with him and put more bodies in front of the attack. Right, right. Well, and I mean, if you look at the, the bodies and where they are, you know, as James said, there's just too much space right now. we got to get up there. Nicely fakes the handoff. He breaks over the right side. And he's pushed out of bounds by number five, Addison Bass, as well as Javier Waldron, but not before he's able to get down close to the five-yard line. Looks like he was driven out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. 
That's going to bring up first and goal for the Cavaliers. 9.03 to go here in the second quarter. That was just a playmaker being a playmaker right there, Brad. I mean, he was going left, and next thing you know, broke it back right. I mean, just being a playmaker. Nicely takes the snap. Hand off to Overbay. Overbay around the right side, and he goes in untouched for another Cavalier touchdown. 8.58 to go here in the second quarter. Touchdown, 48-0 is our score here early into the second quarter. you got to think at some point, guys, when will Jamie Hardis well, take number 27 out of the game and get some of the number You never know what they may be called on later in the season. That's very true. Dean Webb on for the point after attempt. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. Our new score here, 8.58 to go in the second quarter. Lord Botetot 49, Blacksburg 0. We're going to step away momentarily. You're listening to ESPN Blacksburg. We respect our police officers and they respect us. We have a unique community because we're a college community. They know how to meet our residents where they live. Police officers are really uh, first among all of us in, in American society. The only others who are kind of shoulder to shoulder with police officers, I think, are soldiers who are you know, serving domestically or internationally. So it's a pretty tough job. My brother's a New York City police officer, so I live day in, day out hearing stories of what he has to suffer from. I think overall, I think the community is doing their best to lift the Blacksburg Police Department up, and I think that the Blacksburg Police Department is doing their best to lift the community up and tell them, we are here for each other, we're a team, we have your back, you have our back, and that's the, you know, the main thing and the most important part of it. Welcome back here, Bill Brown Stadium. About a top 49 to zero over the Bruins. 8.58 to go here. They have teed it up and ready for another kickoff. Well, I mean, we're getting a lot of kickoff return practice right here, Brad, so hopefully we can. And Webb's well, kick rolls into the end zone for another touchback. And the Bruins will take over at the 20 yard line. You know, high school football, you only get the ball at the 20 yard line when it kicked in the end zone. I mean, big difference. College, get it at the 25. Uh, that's, you know, you think about five yards in that situation. That's really huge. It and, is. Uh, you know, in high school football, we really need to get that ball and make sure we at least try to get a return out of it. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, the thing is, is the kicks haven't been real high, yeah. so you can get some yardage there. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Blacksburg has two receivers to the left. It's Means and Waldron. Luke Poff is in the wing back position on the right hand side. Handoff goes to Oliver over the right hand side. He shakes one tackle, but he's met there by Kashawn Anderson as well as number 10, Tristan Overbay. And there is no gain on the play there. That's swarming hard no defense. I really like how the safeties and the corners are very, very active in their defense. They and, are. Uh, they get downhill quick, and, you know, a lot of times their safeties are no deeper than six, seven yards. They're just nothing but another linebacker right there. And that's why we're having some success throwing the ball, too. That's though. right. That's right. But yeah. if you look at that and you see the lineup that they're coming out with offensively, yeah it almost would match us to be able to come back out into a defensive set similar to what they are right now. Carpa rolls to his right, and he's going to throw out of bounds. That ball will be incomplete. It was intended for number 12, Nathaniel Means, but that's going to bring up third and 10 from the 20-yard line for the Bruins. It's just, it's just overwhelming for us right now, Brad. I guess that's the best way I could say it. Overwhelming us in every aspect of the game. Well, you know, we, we talked about this, you know, last year. We talk about it again. It's, you know, this game 
yeah. is really, I mean, you talk about energy zapper. Yeah. This is an energy zapper game right here. We, we're just not ready for this type of competition mm, right now. Not right now, Brad. Not right now. This is not 16, 17, or 18. We're just a whole different league that they're in. Snap is back to Carpa. Carpa is going to keep it. And there's no room to run for Carpa. He maybe picks up a couple yards. It's going to be maybe three yards on the carry. It looks like ball will be spotted at the 23. That's going to bring up a fourth and seven um, for the Bruins here. Yeah, you know, you, you think about it, and in, in, in the River Ridge, we already have to play a tough enough schedule as it is. Perennial power Salem, 4A. Uh, the Cougars, Pulaski County Cougars, they're a much improved team this year. Now they are playing in 3A. You have Christiansburg, who's a 3A power. Yeah, it only looks like we got 10 on the field right now, Brad. Another costly mistake, you know. I mean, snap is back to Minna. Minna gets a good kickoff, drives it back to about the 44 yard line of the Cavaliers. And in on the tackle there for the Bruins is number three, Luke Poff, once again. Poff will bring him down at about the 48-yard line, and that's where the Cavaliers will take over first and ten again. Yeah, you talk about Salem, you talk about Pulaski. You know, they're playing pretty good football right now. And Cave, Patrick Cave, Henry. Patrick Henry. Cave Springs going to be much better this yeah. year. Um, it, it's it's a it's a brutal schedule just in your own district, and so then when you play a team like Botetot, whew, it really just adds fuel to the fire. Yeah. Handoff goes to Zion Woody. He's over the right side. He's into Bruin territory, down to the 40, 35-30, and he's pushed out of bounds. Looks like the ball will be spotted at about the 33-yard line. That's a first down for the Cavaliers. 7.03 to go here. Botetot traveling from your right to your left. Second quarter play, by the top with a huge lead, 49 to zero over the Bruins. Snap back to Nicely, Nicely fakes the handoff. He goes up the middle, breaks one tackle. He's at the 15, takes it down to the 10 and gets inside about the, this is right at the 10 yard line. That'll be another first down. Once again, the quarterback read play. Yeah. I, I, you could see it coming before, right when they when they lined up. You you could tell that that's what the play with it was coming. If the first blue jersey makes the second floor, that would have been about a one or two yard gain. Yep. Blacksburg has got to tackle when they have the opportunity. Yep. Nicely takes the snap, hand off to Woody. Woody over the right hand side, and he's met there by number five, Addison Bass. Slight gain on the play, but not much. Maybe a yard or two. It's going to bring up second down for the Cavaliers. Looks like the ball will be spotted at about the seven, so a three yard gain on the play. And you see their tempo right back to the line, like it's always been a snap every 20 seconds. It's just, just driving down the field. I mean, they're having That's a good it. time out there. Nicely with the quarterback keep. He goes up the middle, and he goes untouched for another touchdown for the Cavaliers. Jakari Nicely, he has made his way into pay dirt a number of times tonight. Our score, 55-0, to 6.14 to go in the second quarter here at Bill Brown Stadium. Brad, the only way we're going to stop him, maybe if he cramps up or something. Yeah. I mean. Tell that or, or, or Coach Arliss puts him over on the sideline, one yeah. of the two. But, you know, he understands, too. You know, you're in this ball game. They have athletics coming up next week, which is typically a pretty daggone good football team. He's got to get his guys at least yep. conditioned you to got play to. in that game for next week. You have so. to. You have to, and you have to be prepared yeah. for the playoffs. I, you know, I remember when I coached at Salem, Coach Willis White, he, he generally would never take his players out until after the third quarter. And that was the main reason that he never took them out is because he wanted to make sure when playoff time came that his kids were conditioned and ready for that type of game environment. And and so you can't blame, you know, Coach Harless here. They're just playing football. They're just running yeah. between the tackles. They're not doing anything fancy. Um, and we just we can't stop them. And um... – Boy, it's going. I'm not, I don't see us stopping. I, I don't think we are going to, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, that C gap, that 
you know, you talk about between it, but it's that C gap between that tackle and tight end that they are making a living on all night long, every single play, no matter if it's power, counter, QB, read, whatever, it's the C gap. And, you know, they're just owning it. And Webb approaches the ball. He drives it down the field. And it is caught there by Nathaniel Means at the 10. He's at the 15. He goes sideways. And he's thrown down there by number 10, Tristan Overbay. Blacksburg will take over first and 10 from the 16. 56 to 0 is the score here. Six minutes and eight seconds to go in the second quarter. The running clock will not take effect until the second half. I mean, I was really counting on that, Mark. I mean, come on now. You're going to have to do a little bit better. <laughs> Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Javier Waldron as well as Means to the right-hand side. Oliver in the backfield with Carpa. Oliver with the handoff, and there's no room for Oliver. Every ball carrier. Yeah. Before it could ever get going, Brad. It's going to be hard. Yeah. In on the tackle for the Cavaliers, number 63, Ryan Quesenberry. First time I think we've called his name tonight, Brad. I mean, you look out there, and, and um, he's another one of the big kids. And uh, Oh, yeah. He's 6'2", 270, uh, just, a, just an 11th uh, junior. I mean, yeah, that's they right. got him coming. Not, they don't get any smaller next year either. No, no. Snap back to Carpa. Carpa looks to his right. He's got Going. Luke Poff over the middle. 30, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Blacksburg. Luke Poff, 88-yard touchdown reception. No flags on the field. That is a little bit of positivity that we need. Did you see the explosiveness by Paul? I mean, he took off. He got that ball. There was a guy right on his heels. Next thing you know, he left him in the dust. That was a wonderful play. Uh, just great to see. Going back to what uh, what you said earlier, Mark, a little slant. Yes. And it, there he goes. Slant right there, and next thing you know, bam. Well, I said early in the game, number three is a football player. He is the one Bruin right Number now who I've seen that I think could play and those teams back in the 16, 17, 18 era. He definitely could. Penalty flags down on the extra point attempt. Illegal procedure is the call against the Bruins, so that'll be a five-yard penalty. His dad, Joey Poff, was quite a player back in the day in the mid-80s uh, for, the, for the Indians as well. And... Uh, I, I believe he probably still holds the uh, free kick record 80 yards uh, in VHSL uh, history. Didn't that happen in a playoff game? I too? think it did. There was a lot of wind behind it. Yeah. You don't want to inflate Joey's head. Let's, let's just say a lot of wind behind that one. He was quite a player, though. <laughs> Snap is down. Menace kick is blocked. So the point after attempt is unsuccessful. However, a little bit of positivity for the Bruins, and you just love to see them continuing to fight no matter what the score is. Blacksburg gets on the board finally here in the first quarter. Our score, 56-6, to 5-11 to go in the second quarter. We're going to step away for a 30-second break. You're listening to ESPN Blacksburg Bruin football on 93.1, 97.1. That's probably one of the things that really keep me going with being a medic. You know, even if I've been on shift, I mean, I've been here for upwards of 24 hours at one time. Just being able to be, I guess, that kind of knight in shining armor for these people that are having their worst day possible if they can't catch their breath or if their loved one isn't breathing or anything like that. When we walk in and we're able to do what we need to do to hopefully correct the situation. People in this area are just very grateful that we're here, that this is what we do, and that they continue to support us in what we do. The drive to help people is what brings me here. I'm able to see someone in a situation that needs help and knowing that I'm not helpless and just watching something happen, that's really encouraging and it makes me want to continue in this field and be able to help others. It feels wonderful. You, you definitely don't feel helpless. I mean, I came to this squad not knowing anything except for the fact that I wanted to help. 
They provided all the training that I needed, and now I can go on any call and feel confident that I can definitely make a difference. Welcome back here, Blacksburg, Virginia, Bill Brown Stadium, David Chris Field, and Blacksburg gets on the board. 88-yard touchdown reception from Carpa to Luke Poff. The pass was about a 10-yard pass, and Poff did the rest and took it to the house. Point after attempt was unsuccessful. The Cavaliers are leading the Bruins here, 56-6, 5-11 to go in the second quarter. Kickoff team is on board here for the Bruins. Liam Minna has it teed up at the 40-yard line. Back deep for the Cavaliers is number one, Cade Lang, as well as number 10, Tristan Overbay. Onside kick attempt by the Bruins. Ball does not travel 10 yards, and Botetot recovers it at midfield. It was about as close to 10 yards as you could get. It was executed pretty well. It just the ball just didn't go where it needed to go. Yeah, I mean, you know, they were bailing out right there, Brad, and um, it definitely would have been a great opportunity to get it on side. We just didn't quite kick it long, hard, uh, hard enough, and you know, nine and a half yards. But we, we would have had if it would have gone ten. Let's just That's say right. that because it was they, they were bailing out. Yeah, that would have it would have worked if the ball could have went that far, but unfortunately. The cookie didn't crumble that way. And so now Botetot has the ball at the 49-yard line of the Bruins where they'll have first and 10 here. 5-11 to go in the second quarter. Jamie Harless' starter still in the game, nicely at quarterback. On the left hand is Woody. On the right hand, Woody takes the hand off over the right side. He's at the 35, the 30, 20. 10, and he is into the end zone for a 49-yard touchdown run untouched. That untouched took 10 back. seconds. Yeah. Touchdown. Oh, Once again, guys, that little jump hop by the H-back tips off what side it's coming to, but blockers up front doing a great job just clearing the blue jerseys out of the way. You know, if, you, if, if you're looking at it there, I mean, they almost have double the blockers that we have defenders, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's the, you know, I mean, that's why they haven't changed from their tight formation. Yeah. You know, they, they, everything that they're doing is successful. Webb on for the point after attempt once again. His kick is up and good. He's going to need to put that leg into an ice bucket tonight. He is really getting to use it. Our new score here, 5.01 to go. Lord Botetot 63, Bruin 6. 5.01 to go here in the second quarter. We're going to keep it here. That happened pretty quickly. Very quickly, Brad. Um, you know, had a little momentum. Like I said, something positive happened, and then bam, they hit you right back in the mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, and, and, and I guarantee you that's what they were saying on the sideline. They just wanted, you know, yep. we had a big play. They were going to come back and try to hit us right back in the mouth as quickly as they could, and they did. Yep. Well, I got to think, James, back to if you were coaching, and you, you were rarely on the other side of something like this. But I think what you would be telling the players is, you know, look at that scoreboard. Play like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's get something positive going here. Well, you know, they see the scoreboard, unfortunately. They do see it. But like you said, the effort right there, you saw Luke trying to chase the guy down at the end. He never stopped. He kept chasing him down, chasing him down. And he's playing like a zero here. They need everybody else to follow them. Yes, they need uh, they need uh, 21 more like that. You know, it's just uh, Luke is laying it all on the line, and that's that's what you got to do. And uh, um, and players like Luke Poff is is who will build this program back. Botetot drives the ball. It stops right at the four yard line. Nathaniel Means picks it up and he's able to bring it back to about, uh, looks like about to about the 13 yard line. However, there are penalty flags down. It appears like Blackburn returners have been coached not to go get the ball because they are giving up valuable field position by hoping the ball goes into the end zone as opposed to picking it up and trying to do something with it. Yeah, and unfortunately on that particular kick, it just died right at the three-yard line. And on a kickoff, it's a live ball. So if the, if the kickoff team hops on the ball, it's their ball. It's yeah. a live ball. That had a little time to go get it. Yeah. You Looks like the penalty is going to go against the Cavaliers. Personal foul penalty, a bit of 15-yard penalty. 
and that will drive the ball up to the 27 yard line in between the 27 and 28 yard line where Bruins will take over first and 10 402 and counting here in the second quarter our score is 63 by the tot six for the Bruins Blacksburg breaks the huddle Javier Waldron to the left Nathaniel Means to the right Chandler Montgomery to the left It'll, it's going to be an illegal procedure against the Bruins Snap is bobbled by Carpa. He does fall on it. I don't believe they called a flag over there, but it was definitely illegal procedure Something by was a receiver. Going on there, and you could tell between the, the snap and everything, it was all discombobulated right there, Brad. Uh, Looks like Carpa got banged up on the play. He's going to come off on his own power, but they're going to have to bring in another quarterback, and that will be Chandler Montgomery. Carpus had a had a you, you know some positivity yeah. you know with his throws and those types I, of things. I think we'll see him in after one play right here. Um, just got a little banged up right there. He looks like he's just fine, thank goodness. And uh, but hey, give an opportunity to Chandler to take a snap, see what can happen. I mean, Chandler's a tall young man, uh, pretty good little basketball player yeah. too, and you know got some long arms. He might be able to throw that thing down the field. He very well could. Snap his back, handoff goes to. Oliver and Oliver is met immediately there by number 78, Kashawn Anderson. That'll be another loss on the play. That's going to bring up third and about, it looks like about uh, 21. I tell you what, Brad, Kashawn was in the backfield. I thought he was going to take the handoff. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was there. There was no stopping him. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter that he's 310 pounds, he can move. He can move. He'll play at the next level. Somewhere. Yes, he will. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Carpa back in the game. Carpa rolls to his right, and he's getting chased down by number nine, Cody McConaughey. And McConaughey will tackle Carpa all the way back at the one, to, it looks like two yard line. Huge loss there on that play. There was nowhere for Ethan to go. That'll bring up fourth and 460. Yeah. Brad, and, you know, and, 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 and last week we had a little mishap on our punt when we were backed up like this. It actually turned out to our advantage because they got a safety, okay, but we kicked off and they had Giles, you know, kicked it off all the way to Giles' 10 yard line. Um, you know, sometimes taking a safety is not a bad thing. Minna picks the ball up off the turf. He does get the kick away. It bounces at the 34. Cade Lang's got it at the 30. 25. He's going back across the field to the right. 25. 20. And Thomas Boyd tracks him down over on the bottom top sideline and brings him down. There is a penalty flag on the field. I believe it will be a personal foul penalty. Just not sure if it's going against Botetot or Blacksburg. I believe it will go against Botetot. I believe you're right, Brad, right there. That's that's a couple times Botetot has blocked behind the football like that. And, um, you know, that's going to be called every time. That's right. So it looks like it's blocking the back, not a personal foul, but blocking the back against the Cavaliers. So that will move them back from where the ball was spotted. Cavaliers will have the ball at the Bruins 26 where they'll take over first and 10. 144 to go here in the second quarter. Lord Botetot Cavaliers 63, Blacksburg Bruins 6. Running backs to both sides of Nicely. Snap back to Nicely, hands off. Looks like McGinnis over the left side. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10, the five, and he's in for another Cavalier touchdown. Not right now, um, that is for sure. 69 to 6, 135 to go here in the second quarter. Dean is on for the point after attempt. On the hold is number 22, Quentin Jones. Snap is back, holds down, kick is up, and Webb's kick is good. Our new score, 135 to go in the second quarter. Lord Botetot 70, Blacksburg 6. 
We're going to keep it here with a minute 35 to go in the quarter. You know, I, I often think back when you see a score 70 to 6. I think back when Thad Wells was here and in the playoffs we beat Botetot 77 to 7, I believe it was. Um, no, no, no. No, uh, the set, uh, this was when we played Bada Todd. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes when those types of things happen, they always come back around to you. And uh, it has came back around to us uh, tonight here, 135 to go in the second quarter. Lord Bada Todd 70 and Blacksburg 6. And, uh, you Some know. things are never forgotten, bro. No, no. And, you know, I. I know Coach Harless was very upset at that time, and I mean, that's been a long time ago, but, you know, like you said, sometimes things just aren't ever forgotten. And, uh, um, and you know, I think that Coach Harless will will score as long as he can score. And like I said, he's not doing anything fun, uh, funny or fancy, you know. I mean, he's just, play. Yeah, he's just playing the game. Same plays the whole time. Webb kicks the ball, and he drives it back to about the 10-yard line. It's caught there by Means. He's up to the 20 and takes it up to about the 22-yard line. Now, you see a difference there. Means comes up to catch the ball on a run, and he gets positive yardage up to the 21-yard line right yep. there. So, you, you know, those are the things that you have to look at. That that kick is is low, so it – if, if the kick's high and it's deep, then it gives the kickoff coverage team time to get down the field. But when it's low and long like that, if you're able to catch it, you can pick up some yardage, and uh, which, you know, Means did at that point. So the Bruins will have the ball starting at the 21, first and 10, 131 to go here in the second quarter. And he's having to cover a lot of ground back there, just being a single returner, basically. And you're having to cover a lot of ground left That's right. to right, east to west. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Means is at the right. Aiden Eldridge and Luke Poff back in at a blocker position. Oh, Lord. Ball's on the ground, and it's recovered by the Cavaliers. That's a scoop and score by number 10, Tristan Overbay. Looks like a penalty, looks like a penalty flag is down. Going to be illegal procedure against the Bruins. A lot of confusion out there. Well, they declined it. So it's going to be a touchdown for the Cavaliers. So illegal procedure was the call against the Bruins, but it the the, game, the ball was not stopped. Yeah. So you play it, and it was a scoop and score by number 10, Tristan Overbay, and our score here 124 to go in the second quarter, 76 to six. I thought I heard a whistle. I thought maybe it down. Players are always told. You play until you hear a whistle. That's right. I was hoping we heard a whistle. I was hoping too. Once again, Webb on for the point after attempt. Holding for him is number 22, Quentin Jones. Snap is back. Hold is good. And Webb's kick is good as well. Our new score here in the second quarter of play, Lord Botetot 77 and Blacksburg 6. We're going to take a 30-second break here. You're listening to Bruin Football on ESPN Blacksburg. Come and do a ride along. So I'd encourage anyone to do a ride along. I would definitely say come do a ride along. There's a ride along form on our website that you can do a ride along if you're willing to see the things that we do see in EMS sometimes. You do have to be prepared if you're going to do a ride along. Because ride along you actually come on calls with us and you can see exactly what's happening. Ride alongs are a fantastic opportunity for you not only to see the medical care that we provide but see the other members that exist at this agency and all the diversity and all the excitement that having different mindsets and different ideologies can bring to your experience in medicine and in, within the community. And there's no better experience than to actually see it. That way you can make your determination as to whether or not this is for you. We hope that it is. Come see what our facility is like. Come tour, come look at an open house. We are here 24 seven. You can go to our website and you can sign up for a ride along whenever it best suits you. Come prepared because we're not gonna take you on a fake call. We're gonna take you on a real call. So you're going to get to see exactly what we get to see. Welcome back here. David Crisfield, Blacksburg, Virginia, where the Bruins are trailing heavily here in the first half of play. Minute 24 to go. Lord Badatot Cavaliers 77. And that is correct. 77 is the score to six 
by the Bruins. Kickoff goes, it's picked up by Javier Waldron. Waldron's at the 24, and he musters enough room to get back to the 25-yard line where the Bruins will take over. Minute 18 to go at the 25. Oh, Brad, I mean, at the end of the day, we just got to get into halftime. Just got to get there. We got to. That's exactly right. And, you know, at this point, you, you look at it from a standpoint. I mean, you want your kids fighting. Yeah. And you want them to not give up. But you also want to make sure you don't get anybody hurt. Yeah, you want to because try to find a you, way. Because you got you to have all your bodies ready for next week in a game that, that could be a game that we could really compete with, we hope. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Waldron and Means to the left. Poff in the wing position to the right. And Ethan Carpa snap is back and he's going to take a knee. And so I believe what's going to happen here is they're going to run the clock down and, and hopefully call it a half here. Yep. Ball is spotted at the 20 yard line. Second and 15. 45 seconds and counting here in the second quarter. Carpa looks for the official to give the hand signal to let him know when it's down to the five second mark. Snap is back, Carpa takes a knee. 25 seconds and counting, and that's going to be the end of our first half of play. Long, long first half for the Bruins here tonight. The score here is our end of the first half of play is Lord Botetot 77 and Blacksburg 6. We're going to step away. When we come back, we'll have our halftime show. You're listening to ESPN Blacksburg, Bruin football on 93.1 and 97.1. So one of the things we wanted to really highlight in this project was the history of the hand-in-hand -hand playground. Once we went through the community engagement and came up with a new design, we wanted to honor the history. And the history is really these pickets. So we are removing the old pickets. We are cleaning them up, repainting them, re-sanding them, and then resealing them. So once the playground is reinstalled, we'll put in a brand new fence and these two pickets will get reinstalled back up on the fence to show the history. These are the individuals that paid, that, that played, and that actually constructed the playground. So we want to honor that. We want to refurbish these, put these up so they look nice and clean, and also honor the new people that want to support us. playground was wood and wood is only as good as the day you put it in and it starts to degress. So if you had a 30 year old deck, you probably would replace it. Well, this playground was over 30 years old. We need to replace it. So we're putting in with composite materials that weather better, do not splinter, um, safer to the touch and the feel. So that's really important to, to make the uh, improvements in this playground. We'll also have sensory things. Not every child plays the exact same. Not every child wants the interaction that every child wants. So we'll have different areas and nooks and sensory adaptations for those children as well. People love playgrounds and, and, and people really love these playgrounds. We have them in uh, India, uh, Israel, Australia, I've built one in England. 
Uh, where else? New Zealand, I know, and I've worked it in Hawaii and Alaska. Yeah. The project itself was a little difficult uh, because of the nature of the site, you know, having, having to store all the material way up there and have, have to bring it down. But as a result, you still have this great site that you can, you can, you know, it's a beautiful spot for a playground. Uh, the playground itself is just, just, it's magnificent. You know, it's like from, from the treehouse tower and the giant slide to, uh, to all the other ADA features that, that are uh, all throughout the playground. Welcome back here, Bill Brown Stadium, as we begin the second quarter of play. Dean Webb approaches the ball for the Cavaliers, and he drives it back to about the eight-yard line, and Javier Waldron lets it bounce, and it goes into the end zone, and the Bruins will take over at the 20-yard line, trailing the Cavaliers 77-6. to As we start the second half of play, it will be a continuous clock and will not stop except for injuries and timeouts. Yeah, Brad, we've talked a little bit about, you know, the playoff pitcher for Botetai and uh, in that region 3D. Um, I tell you what, it's it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. And they are a formidable foe. They, they really are. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. It's like Chandler Montgomery back at quarterback. Montgomery throws it out to Means. Means is at the 22 to 24. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So pick up of five yards on the reception. Again, you know, working the boundary right here. Nice, short, simple pass. Um, positive yard. Chandler Montgomery getting a little bit of time here at the quarterback position for the Bruins. Javier Waldron and Nathaniel Means, two receivers to the right. Chandler passed to Waldron. Waldron breaks the tackle, but he is brought down by a host of other Cavaliers. He thought for just a second there he was going to yeah. break away, but boy, that team speed by the Cavaliers, they were all over him, and uh, it looks like he maybe is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a gain of a yard. Pretty close, Brad, but you're right. You know, broke that first tackle, but that did slow them up. And next thing you know, there's two or three red hats right there. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, you got to tip the hat also yeah. to Bada Tot and the way they swarm and play defense. I yeah. mean, they're they're getting after it. And this in their starters out there, man. It's a whole new unit out there. That's right. Uh, I mean, they're still playing fast and physical. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Snap back to Montgomery, hand off to Oliver on the right side. He's going to go for about three yards on the carry where he's driven out of bounds. It's going to bring up fourth down for the Bruins. It's like fourth and two will be the call. 9.57 and counting here in the third quarter. Blacksburg's traveling from your right to your left. Looks like Blacksburg will go for it here on fourth down. I mean... Our, our best defense is going to try to keep their offense keep, on the field keep, to get a first down. That's right. right. We haven't stopped them all night, so, hey, why not? You, you have nothing to lose here. Nothing to lose at all, Brad. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Two receivers to the right. Blocking back to the left. Snap is on the ground. 
pass is caught by Waldron. Waldron breaks three. He's got a first down, and he's met over there at about the 32-yard line on Botetot's sideline where he's tackled by a host of Cavaliers. But that is enough to pick up a first down for the Bruins. Much needed, much needed. Got to get the snap right there. We're, yep. we're getting Montgomery at a bad spot because it's on the ground every time, and it just throws the timing off. So we got to get that snap back there where it belongs. Waldron's coming off the field. I believe I saw uh, Stephen Spradlin. Yeah, uh, looks like uh, right there. Grady Spradlin. That's right. Yeah, Grady Spradlin, 19. single, single receiver to the right. Snap is back to Montgomery. Oliver's got it to the left-hand side. He makes a cut, picks up about a yard on the carry. Once again, he's met by a host of Cavaliers. Looks like in there for the Cavaliers first is number 63, Ryan Quesenberry. He did a good job just to get back to the line of scrimmage right there. Brad. He did. He did. And is able to pick up a yard. So ball spotted at the 38, or I'm sorry, the 33-yard line. 8-12 and counting here in the third quarter. Botetot leading the Bruins 77-6. That's painful to say. Painful, Brad. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Spradlin and Means, two receivers to the left. Snap is back to Montgomery. Montgomery looks down the field. He throws down the middle field. He's got Means at the 40-yard line of the Cavaliers, and Means takes it down to the 35. That'll be a first down pass from Montgomery to Means, and the Bruins are in Cavalier territory. I mean, he comes in the ball game. I believe he's about 100 percentage on the 100 yeah. percent on the completion ratio yeah, right he's now, Brad. Throwing the ball well. Great job there. Great connection. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Grady Spradlin, single receiver to the left. Nathaniel Means, single receiver to the right. Luke Poff in the wing back position. Oliver in the backfield with Montgomery. Ball is on the ground. Montgomery picks it up. Montgomery scrambles. He's going to the 30, and he's driven out of bounds there by number 24, Jerry Smith of the Cavaliers, but not before Montgomery was able to pick up about five yards on the play. So Chandler Montgomery using his athletic ability there to pick up some yardage. The snap was on the ground, and, and they couldn't get the handoff exchange, so Montgomery just does the best he can with his feet. Yeah, making something out of nothing right there, Brad. Sometimes that's what you got to do. That's exactly right. Student section's still there. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I just, you got to commend them for sticking here and, and, and staying with these players. That means a lot. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Spradlin and Means, two receivers to the left. Oliver shifts from the right side of Montgomery to the left side. Snap is back on the ground. Handoff goes to Oliver. Oliver makes one guy miss and picks up about four yards on the carry. That's going to bring up third down for the Bruins. Maybe three yards on the carry. Made a good little move there, initial move, yeah. and sort of hop step. Yep. The other thing I've seen here, guys, is there's no confusion. Like coming out. On the first half, a lot of plays, guys didn't know where to go. You haven't seen that here on this drive. Yeah, that so far they're 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 doing well and uh you know, the other thing that you like to see, you like to see some of those other players in there getting some opportunities and playing. And, uh, you know, I know like Grady Spradlin, yeah. I mean, he's put in the effort. He's put in the time. So you like to see him out there on the field getting his opportunity. Blacksburg once again breaks the huddle. Two receivers to the left, wing back to the right. Oliver sets up on the left of Chandler Montgomery. Snap is back on the ground once again. Montgomery's going to have to do it with his feet. He goes to his right, but he is tackled for a loss over there. Looks like number 28, Tristan Graves, showing his speed, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Again, guys, it's it's the snap. We got to get the snap right. We bring the puck crew out there. Looks like it's going to be fourth and eight for the Bruins, and they are going to bring out the punt team. I'm not understanding that. You know, we went for it down here inside our 20-yard line. Um, but, okay. So, Bruins uh, bring the punt team on. A little bit of confusion of who's supposed to be on the field. 
<laughs> Snap is back to Means. Means is going to punt. Mena is going to punt it away. And he's going to punt it down to the 15 yard line where it will roll out of bounds. And Lord Botatot will take over at that point. I'm not understanding that call, you know. I think maybe Bradford would have to consent to see practice on a call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, that was a directional punt. Which one of the first ones did there? And you would have to wait in line. That may have been what they were trying to do. I got you. So you're saying a coaching moment right there, Mark? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm just a knucklehead broadcaster. You're the former coach. Nah, I mean. Fourth yeah. 13 to go here in the third quarter. Botatot takes over. Looks like in the quarterback position there for the Cavaliers is number 12, Aiden Thomas with a quarterback keep. He tries to take it up the middle. He's met there by the Bruins. There is a penalty flag on the play. Personal foul against the Bruins. That'll be a 15 yard penalty. And we did so well in the first half. We did. Yeah, th these are things you just can't have happen right now. No, and you know, the thing that's really disappointing about that is, is we have some new new faces in there playing, and so you hope that it's 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 one of those, you know, it's not one of the kids that's getting a new opportunity here. Yeah. That was at his bass, it seemed you know, maybe just a little frustration being shown there, but hard as it is when you're in this situation, you've got to control the emotion. Ball spotted at the 30, first and 10. Handoff goes to number 17, Camden Umber. Umber still pushing forward, but he's brought down after about a six-yard pickup. Philip Harris in a 13, Trimley goes up the middle. In on the tackle for the Bruins, number three, Luke Poff, as well as number one, Javier Waldron. Brad, you know what they're going to do. They're not going to change. No, Why it's just they, you know? coming up the middle. It's the same, you know, they're having their backups in, but they're doing the same thing that they do. This is what they do. Handoff goes up the middle. Looks like looks like number 22, Quentin Jones, on the carry for the Cavaliers. He picks up enough yardage all the way down to the 41-yard line, and that will be enough yardage for a Botetourt Cavalier first down. You know, this is a you know the first half they were always no huddle, no huddle. They called everything at the line. Now they're huddling. Taking their time. Yeah, I mean, that's a classy approach by yeah. Jamie Harless, you know. I mean, he's he's trying his best. Botatop breaks the huddle. Aiden Thomas with the quarterback keep, and he's met immediately there by Blacksburg's Hongi Lou, and that will be a sack from behind the line of scrimmage. Great job there by Lou. Found a little seam, little crease, went right through there, and... Uh, one yard no. loss. Yeah, I mean, put the pads to him right there, Brad. Yes, he did. I, you, you know, I, I saw him in, um, I think it was in the middle school game um, last time I watched, middle, or I'm sorry, the JV game, and uh, he, he brought the pads there too. You know, that, that could be a hidden secret right there. Handoff goes to number 22, Quentin Jones. Jones is tackled there by number five, Addison Bass. Looks like Luke Poff also in on the tackle. That's going to be a pickup of five yards. They, they are, and that's what you want to see. We still have some of our core players in there, but we do have a few new faces. Augie Lee would be one. Chandler Montgomery in at a cornerback. Handoff goes to number... 13, Danny Crawley, the third, and he's met by number two, James Rich, as well as number three, Luke Poff, and short gain on the play, maybe a gain of a yard. That's going to bring up fourth and four for the Cavaliers. 44 seconds to go here in the third quarter. If we're going to have any success defensively, those two guys, James Rich, Luke Poff, are going to be crucial. And you see Blacksburg comes out a little bit more this half in a five-man front. Um, where we would, had been in a little bit of a three-man front in the first half, so in a, in a uh, bringing a little bit more bodies up in the front line. Tighten them down a little bit more. Handoff goes to 22, Quentin Jones. Jones is met there by Thomas Boyd as well as Luke Poff. And the spot will be crucial here to see if it's a first down. I believe that it's going to be. 
ball will be spotted at the 48-yard line. That will be a first down for the Cavaliers. That's the end of the third quarter of play. Our score, the same as it was at half, 77-2-6 in favor of the Cavaliers. We're going to step away for 30 seconds. You're listening to Bruin Football on ESPN Blacksburg. For me, it is such an honor, frankly, to be in that position when people need help. They have nowhere else to go. They have no idea who to call. They call 911 and I'm the one who shows up. What an honor that is to be able to provide care and compassion to my neighbors, my friends, my peers from the community. And you know, it's not always life-threatening situations. It's not always uh, minor situations. No matter the level of care provided or the complexity that's needed to provide adequate health care to these neighbors, that's what we do. Right? We're not in it for the money, we're not in it for the fame, we're in it to serve others. And that's what makes our agency so great. For me, it's living out my childhood dream. Um, this is something I've wanted to do since a child. And walking in and seeing a bay with six ambulances, two squad trucks, UTVs, SUVs, it is a little boy's dream come true. And the fact that I get to do that every weekend is something I wouldn't have anywhere else. They're set to begin the fourth quarter of play here. Botetot ends the third quarter of play with a first down run by number 22, Quentin Jones. They have the ball at the 48 yard line of the Bruins and they are set to snap the ball away. Handoff goes once again to Jones over the right side. He picks up five, six yards. He's carrying Bruins down the field. Extra effort there by Jones all the way down to the 35-yard line. And that's going to be a Cavalier first down. Hard run there by Quentin Jones. Another score, Brad, real quick. Uh, Patrick Henry up over uh, EC Glass, 31 to 21. I mean, that's a good football game right there. Ooh, I'd you know, say. you think EC Glass lost to, I mean, beat the uh, LB last week. I mean, you think how good Patrick Henry Oh, could yeah. Be. You Absolutely. Know, Patrick Henry always has extremely talented, talented athletes. But then you add some size and strength to him, holy cow. Handoff goes to Danny Crawley the third for the Cavaliers. He picks up about four yards on the carry. Meeting him at the 31-yard line was number three, Luke Poff. It's going to bring up second and six for the Cavaliers, 10-53 and counting here in the first, fourth quarter. Handoff goes to Jones over the right side. He's at the 25, at the 20, and he's tackled over there by a host of Bruins, but once again, picks up enough yardage for a Cavalier first down. Cavaliers break the huddle. Handoff goes to number 17, Camden Under. Correction, 13, Danny Crawley, the third. He's hitting the backfield there by number two, James Rich, still playing hard. Looks like Crowley might have got back to the line of scrimmage there, so good job there by Rich. Got a couple additional scores for you, James. Uh, we've got Fort Chiswell 20 to six over Floyd in the fourth quarter. Radford beat Giles, it's a final, 35 to zero. And Salem is over Franklin County, 48 to zero. Handoff goes to Quentin Jones over the right side. He cuts it back up the middle and takes it down inside the 10 yard line. That's gonna bring up second down for the Cavaliers. Yeah, I wasn't going to be Franklin County this week. We talked about it. You know, Salem losing to LCA last week. And I'm talking about one heck of a football team, that LCA football Woo! team. Holy cow, they got athletes and big strength and size. I mean, they're definitely a state championship caliber team. And eventually, we talked about Botetot and Christiansburg yeah. facing each other, but they're going to have to face LCA, whoever wins that yeah. game if they make that far. Botetot breaks the huddle. And it's the quarterback keep there, Aiden Thomas, over the right-hand side. He's going to take it down to the five-yard line. That will be a first down for the Cavaliers, so it brings up first and goal 
for Lord Botetot from the five yard line, 842 and counting here in the fourth quarter. You know, you're talking about LCA, East and Glass, Heritage. All three of those schools are within a, just, you know, basically sight of each other. They all three play really good football. Three A, two three A teams, one four A team, I mean. Handoff goes to Crawley the third. He rumbles ahead for a yard pickup. Looks, really good yeah. Looks like Thomas Boyd in on the tackle there for the Bruins. It's going to bring up second and goal from the four. Yeah, very good coaches. And, you know, it doesn't hurt when you're LCA and you got people that can move into your school. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they got a couple major recruits that are playing for them that's going to play big time football yeah. uh, at the next level. I think they said the running back's going to Clemson. I think I mean. so. And from what I hear, he's, you know, as good as he is as a running back, he's a heck of a defender too. Yes, I think you're right. Handoff goes. Looks like looked like um, Camden Umber on that, and it looks like he gets down to the one yard line. It's going to bring up third and goal from the one. It's third and goal from inside the one yard line. I called the Heritage Beavis Championship last year. About 25 degrees up in Lynchburg. Here's Bradley. Shorts, Shorts and a t-shirt. Hi, Coach. Like that doesn't surprise me. Handoff goes to Crowley. Crowley takes it in for a Cavalier touchdown. 707 and counting. That runs the score board up to 83 for the Cavaliers. You know, you, you talk about Bradley. Uh, uh, I played against Bradley. Uh, James and I both did, and he was quite a player. He was as fiery as a player as he is as a coach. And uh, um, but you know the thing is, is everywhere he's been, everywhere he's he's been, he has won. He he is a great football coach. Um, he 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 relates to his kids and just does a terrific job. I coached with his dad for a, a, a good amount of time when I was at Salem, and one of the the finest football minds that I know. Brad was at that time coaching away from here. Um, Trying to think where he was coaching at. Amelia? Uh, uh, no. Um, Charles Haley played there. Um, can't think of it right now off the top of my head. Um, they were they had a major losing streak, and then he brought them back oh, to the William promised Campbell, land. Maybe? William Campbell, that's yeah. it. And um, and then you know then he's been around a few different places. But like I said, everywhere he's been, he's been successful. He, he got connected with the Bowdens, uh, Bobby Bowden, Terry Bowden, all of them. And he actually used to go to Alabama and run their camp um, for them down there. And just the knowledge that, that he got through that. And he played for Rich Rodriguez at Glenville State. And, um, and, and that connection just did wonders for him and, and brought him just a, a terrific football knowledge. And he already had a great knowledge because of the coaching uh, um, experience within their family. Uh, Brad's grandfather, who they called Burhead Bradley, was longtime coach at Graham. And uh, Larry Bradley, who coached at, at Grundy then for years at Salem and also at Andrew Lewis. And I think in his middle school days when he coached at middle school, I want to say, he, I, I can't remember how many years, it was probably 25 or 30 years. And I think his loss record was uh, um, under 20 in all of those years, you know. And, uh, and that, that's really what success Salem built from was from Andrew Lewis. And so, you know, he's definitely got a lot of experience and a lot, a lot of knowledge that, that he can go from. And, and it, it shows in what he does and how he gets out and, and gets his players to play football. Lord Botetot kicks it, and it hits at the 10-yard line. And stalls there and Blacksburg's Nathaniel Means picks it up and he's tackled immediately. That, what you just did reminds me of the good old days when I would just say passed. something and I would just wind you up and let you go. <laughs> <laughs> you spouted off with so much knowledge right there. I got to coach against the guy a couple times and his passing game is layered. It's not just I throw the ball the guy catches it and runs. He does such a good job of setting up those passes and the blocking down the field and knowing who's going to be blocking based on the timing of it. He layers his passing game very well. That's why he has success. I mean, it's not super complicated what he does. He doesn't run 500 different things. He, he's very simple, but the way he teaches his kids 
how to block downfield on passing plays, especially crossing routes, is really, really amazing. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot trying to coach against him. So. Oh, absolutely. Reps, reps, reps. Handoff is bobbled by the Bruins, and it will be a fumble, and the Cavaliers have recovered. Ball will be spotted at the 10-yard line of the Bruins. And you can see as the Bruins come off the field, the face of defeat is starting to catch up with them, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I, I will say, I, I, I have to say, you know, they're trailing 83-6, to six, but these kids have been playing hard. They, they haven't given up. They're still coming out and playing hard. And, and that that says something there, and uh, you just hate it. You just hate it for them. I, I, uh, I don't know what else to say, but I hate it for them. Yeah, I feel for the guy. And we can't forget the chain gang. Looking on the far side. 5.50 and counting is our time here in the fourth quarter. Just doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Yeah, you know, you, you, we were talking about Bradley there, and uh, um, I, the thing that's impressive to me is he gets out, like, in their workouts and competitions, and he makes them compete in everything that they do. In, in practice, and he'll compete right with them. And, and you know, players really respect that, and they want to play hard for him, and that, that makes a huge difference. And they're just going to punt the ball through the end zone? I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do. They, it looks might like take a knee. they might take a knee here. It's 5-15. I believe that's what they're going to do. They're waiting for the official to count down to the five seconds. And then they're going to snap it. And I believe they're already going to a victory formation here with five minutes mm -hmm. and counting. And that is correct. Looks like number 17 for Vodatot, Camden Umber, takes a knee. Oh, it is. It is. I mean, he's... Very successful. You can tell the weight program that he has and, you know, the amount of college teams that come into his program are phenomenal. And, yeah. you know, that's why players want to play for him. Well, they do a good job at their development. Um, you know, they do a good job with Reed Mountain Middle School. Those kids start lifting weights in sixth and seventh grade, you know, appropriate stuff. Right. And, um, you know, so they're starting to build – their strength then, and, and it's just, you know, it filters up as they come into the high school. They know what to expect, and and uh, they're ready to go. And that's, you know, that's what it takes. That's that's yep. what it takes to build a program. And, you know, I, I often refer back to Salem, and, and, you know, it all started with the youth levels and, and, you know, the connection with the high school program and the recreation program and trying to make sure that, that a lot of the same systems were being ran and those types of things. I, I always remember Coach Larry Bradley telling me that, you know, we want to run the same plays or, or the same system in, in might league football as we do as a senior at Salem High School. Now, there's some differences there, and there's a lot sure. more items that you do, but at the end of the day, we want the terminology to be the same. We want some of the setups to be the same. And if those kids end up not playing when they get to high school, they're still going to be great fans because they're going to know what our program is about. And uh, and he always stood by that. And, and, you know, it's hard to argue with the success that yeah, they've had. No doubt. And you watch, uh, you know, I came up here and you called the middle school game yesterday. You, you watched um, Patrick Henry. i tell you what, um, those guys – well-oiled machine. I mean, you know, they weren't perfect by any means, but they played with discipline. They also were very well organized. Yep. And uh, especially for a middle school program, very well organized. Players did a great job, and they have some great athletes to go along with it. So they do. You know, it, it, it is a heck of a program Patrick Henry has going. On. I tell you what. Remember this name, DeAndre Robinson. Yeah. Number 57, he was a defensive tackle yep. for their middle school program. The young man can play, and he is going to be a force in a couple years. Yes, he was a train wrecker right there. It, I mean, he just plowed through, did what he wanted. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's amazing. You can sit there and you can watch you can watch these athletes, and you can just tell when there's a, a, a young man that's just at a different level than everyone else. And um, that's what he was yesterday. He was yep. unbelievable. Speaking of Patrick Henry, I want to give a shout out to Nate Calhoun. Yeah. Yeah, Nate Calhoun 
assistant coach formerly of the Bruins, was an assistant coach on the state championship team. Uh, everyone in Blacksburg knows Nate Calhoun, and Nate is actually an assistant now for the middle school team at uh, uh, Patrick Henry. And uh, it was great seeing him yesterday, welcoming him back to Blacksburg. And, uh, you know, want to give him kudos for the victory yesterday. Hated it for our middle school team, but very happy for him and his program. Yeah, good to see old Nate. He's a, you know, he's a Bruin at heart, too. And uh, he loves his Bruins still. And I talked to him pretty much daily, it seems like. And, uh, you know, it was a hard day for him to come back here. And, but uh, he did a great job, him and his team. And, boy, they got some ball players. So. Yes. We even got to see him in halftime. He came up and he saw did. us at halftime, didn't he? Just go, come steal my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, minute 20 to go here in the fourth quarter. Classy move by Lord Botatot. They took a knee for all four downs, and it will be turnover on downs, and Blacksburg's offense will see the field. That's a classy move. We definitely needed that, bro. Yes. We definitely needed that. 108 in counting. Blacksburg breaks the huddle. It looks like Blacksburg is going to do the same thing. They are waiting on the time to wind down, and Chandler Montgomery is going to take the snap, and he's going to take a knee as well. Well, I don't know, Brad. I must have brought the wrong bottle of fairy dust with me. I thought I brought the right one. Was no, it was not Blacksburg's night. It was all Cavaliers tonight. And uh, um, But I, I have a renewed respect for Jamie Harless. I know it might be hard to say with 83-6, to six, but he could have scored well over 100 points tonight. And um, I, I really respect what he did here tonight um, because he didn't have to. And uh, uh, so I respect that. That's going to be the end of the game here. Both teams meet at midfield. Our final score here at Bill Brown Stadium and David Chris Field. Lord Botetot 83, Blacksburg 6. We're going to step away momentarily. When we come back, we'll have our post-game show. You're listening to Bruin Football on ESPN Blacksburg.